Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'd love to pull a T.L. Osborne one day. Like I said, it changed my life. And all he said was, I thought, oh, like I said, I've told you before, man, the guy looked like Bozo the Clown. <coughs> red hair, big bushy red, just came back from, I think, Africa or India, I can't remember. Been over there for who knows how long. And then this beard that kind of went out here and down here and over everywhere. And then when he would speak, it was all chopped up. You know, not going, wow. I thought, and this guy's huge. He's big. And then all of a sudden, he just goes, Jesus loves you. I'm listening. And I mean, he kept that going for 20 minutes. And by the end of the 20 minutes, I was glued to the TV. And it penetrated inside of me. And I go, Jesus loves me. You know, if you would keep saying that over and over again, you'll believe it. And at one point in time, it'll drop into your spirit. And you will never forget, and you will understand when it says beloved. Beloved. You are his beloved. He loves you. How powerful is that? You know, we, uh, mankind, we, with our finite minds, we try to grasp the things of God. And, and he shows us little bits here, little bits there, and we continue to grow. And that love thing, you know, it's a beautiful thing that that the New Testament was in Greek, and how many different uh, words do they have for love in the Greek? Yeah, I think it, it, it gets bigger than the three, actually, when you can break the three down into threes. And I don't know what it is, but it's a lot. And for us, it's the amplified version. Can you amplify this love that you know and you feel? You have it. But then you think, this is me. And I've got the Holy Spirit, who is love, inside, talking to the real me. Spirit man named John. Yeah, my spirit man's named John. Well, you might as well name yours or get a name for him, I don't know. Got to identify you somehow. Not Pastor John. Just John. Yeah. When you start feeling that love, oh, you take this thing to a whole, a whole nother level. You know, I've always likened the things of love with uh, what being a father. And the first one was, you know, getting married and having this love for this woman, which is very powerful very powerful love and then having this love for these children oh my word very very powerful love and then having this love for grandkids very very powerful love and then you just think about we are all kids and grandkids of God yeah. and the love that he has for us yeah. I think about it at times what I put my mom through <laughs> sorry mom you don't care now. But what we put our parents through. Gosh, if we'd have only thought and been led by the Holy Spirit, I would have changed a thousand decisions. God, the whole time he's looking down on him, and all he can say is the same thing T.L. Osborne said. I love you. I love you. You know, for some of us, we still don't get it. You know, it's just not quite penetrated in our spirit. It's got to be in your spirit and then get into your heart and then it comes out and then 
then your mind and your will and your emotions can begin to understand it and sense it. That's what we're talking about, right? We're talking about getting there. We walk led by the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the things that I thought about this last week because all the scriptures that we've been going through, they directly or indirectly have faith involved and have love involved. Now we know that the scripture says that we walk or we live by faith, that's our life. And it says that we walk or live in love. And that's such a biggie, isn't it? We kind of mess, we get this thing messed up all the time. But here's the deal. If we walk, we are walking led by the Spirit. These two things will be manifested in our life. If these two things are not manifested in your life, you're not being led by the Spirit of God. Pretty important. And the most important obvious one is going to be this here. And I said, you know, because oftentimes, and, and the best, the best way to des describe and give you analogies of these things is, is in a marriage relationship. Michelle and I, we don't fight as a general rule. We never have, really. We have arguments. Uh, I, I don't get mad. She gets hurt. I don't get mad you know, type thing. And that's about it. But her memory is, she forgets so quickly. <laughs> on purpose. She forgets on purpose. And that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? And I sit there and I think, good grief, how does she do that? Well, when you're listening to your spirit man in your heart, Spirit man's always going to be talking about this word right here, in your heart. And if you're listening to love, you're listening to God. But oftentimes in that marriage relationship, it doesn't seem like we're listening to love, huh? And the only thing I wanted to say to you about that is that when you're having those intense times of fellowship and you're not listening to your spirit and you're not listening to love, you are not listening to God. That's right. And, and we need that to register in our brain because we want to obey and listen to God. Being led by the Holy Spirit is all about two things. Listening and obeying. That is it. You have to do those two things first. Sorry about that. He said that the camera only goes this far. So I'm going like this over here, and I'm invisible. Over here, I'm here. I'll give you the whole board. Thanks. <laughs> I'll take advantage of that. Okay, but for us right now, we are learning about this, being led by the Spirit. And this is an exciting journey. So I started putting more scriptures on here for us. And these are scriptures that we're just going to go, let's go there. Now, if you guys would be involved in some of the ministries during the week, you would literally know what I'm going to say on Sunday. It's uncanny. Wednesday night, preaching the scriptures I was going to use. Tabitha on Friday had probably 90% of the scriptures I was going to use. And I thought, that's being led by the Spirit of God. How fun is that? Don't you love confirmations? 
confirmations to know that you're on track. It's one thing to take that step of faith and believe God, but isn't it nice when you begin to take that step of faith that the Holy Spirit says, good job, let's take another <laughs> and another, and let's just keep right on going. All right, so today, we're still foundational. We're still in the foundation, so, which means we haven't gotten to this. We're just talking about foundational things. That's going to involve all of it. Our main scriptures that we're still trying to get to is Romans 8, 14 through 16, Proverbs 20, and verse 27. And Lord willing, we'll get to them today. But right now, before we begin, let's go to Galatians 3, 14. And we know this because we went over this for three months, maybe longer, a few months ago. So turn to Galatians 3, 14. You probably already have it memorized, and it's a short one. Galatians 3.14. He, Jesus, redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham. So the blessing, there was a blessing that was given to Abraham. And what do we know about the blessing of Abraham? I think it was in Genesis 24 that he was blessed in every way. So every way is mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, in every way is every way. Amen. And so that's the blessing. It's a mind-blowing blessing. Because most Christians cannot handle it. Right. To be blessed in every way? No. I don't know if you think you don't deserve it. I don't know if you don't want to really believe the Word of God. I can tell you something right now. Theologians, those great theologians that you respect, have probably done more damage to Christendom than anyone. Because we rely on them and the lexicon as opposed to relying on the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. Every theologian has a bias. So you've got to start whittling them down. Well, this guy's the smartest man on the planet. Okay. Is he filled with the Spirit? You're going to take the smartest man on the planet who's going to interpret the Scriptures, or are you going to take somebody filled with the Spirit and interpret the Scriptures? Most go for the smart guy. Every time. And not filled with the Spirit. You can be smart and lack wisdom. Listen, wisdom rules. Wisdom always points to the Holy Spirit. Wisdom says, walk by faith. Wisdom says, walk in love. Wisdom says, stay plugged into the Holy Spirit. Amen. Abide, remain, stay. Wisdom says that. Amen. It's not a complicated thing. We're talking about, and I said, you know, that when I was praying about something last week, inside here, and we know what the scripture says about in that innermost your belly, the rivers of life. The Spirit of God will speak to your spirit right here. Amen. And you're going to know. And you could whittle it down to a green light or a red light. Green light, let's go. Red light, uh-oh. Time to stop. But instead, we're going to try to figure it out intellectually. When does that really work? The soul area submitted to the spirit works. The mind, the will, and the emotion only submitted to the spirit of God. You get born again, spirit man gets born again. 
Holy Spirit comes in. Flesh man, still flesh man. Soul isn't getting born again. It doesn't say anywhere where your soul gets born again. Your soul needs to be restored. Hmm. Got an awfully quiet here. He redeemed us. It's time to start walking in that mercy and grace and redemption. Don't you, you know, I don't watch a lot of movies. I don't even think I saw the whole movie of Braveheart when it came out. Now, my attention span is just not that long. I can't. Anyways, but I do remember that one time when he was dying and he was yelling freedom. Oh, I don't know about you. The freedom resonates in my spirit. Amen. To be free, to be free, to be free. God came to give you abundant life. That life, more abundant life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and start, but I came to give you life, and I'm, that's going to be a good life that I came to. But he also came to set you free. Amen. To be free. Free to be free. Free indeed. Free indeed. I, I, we just, so many of us, we're still not there yet. We're not walking in the freedom that God gave us. Freedom from words that people have said. You're never going to make it. Well, I remember hearing that from my dad. From, because I wasn't exactly a good example for my brother, but I was trying to, be a good ex trying to hide it. But I remember my dad saying one time, I had long hair, that was the problem. And earrings and all that kind of stuff. And uh, my dad says, my brother says to my dad, well, well, John's doing it. Now listen, I was in school, I went to college, got an education, I was, you know, trying to behave myself. And my brother says, well, John's doing that, Dad. And my dad's words were, your brother is a squirrel and a bum. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And I thought to myself, I don't, I, I, the bum part was okay, but the squirrel? <laughs> I just remember being at the beach, having my van, standing there looking at the ocean, getting ready to go out surfing. And these, this statement came in, I will never be responsible. I've seen what it did to my sisters, getting married, having kids, having go to work. <laughs> oh, man. I will, that was it. I'm gonna go through this thing and not be responsible. Oh, and for years it was working until I met Michelle. But feelings of freedom, that's nothing. Those feelings compared to what God has for you now. Amen. To feel free. We were praying before everybody got there. I was praying with John uh, A. And I told him, I said, uh, I said, you know, I told him I was praying about something the other day, and uh, it was about uh, praying for my kids, praying for Mom, Michelle, praying for you guys. And then I said, uh, you know, 99% of my prayers, even when I'm not being specific, all I do is pray this, thank you, God. You know how TL just goes, Jesus loves you? I just go, thank you, God. I just go, thank you, God. Something might pop into my mind. Normally nothing pops in there too, much, too often. And I just go, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I am so thankful. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for your life. I'm thankful you're alive. I'm thankful for your family. 
I'm thankful for the position that God has us. Thankful for being in Big Bear. Thankful for his marvelous provision, his marvelous love. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. You know, this is what I do every single day of my life. And when someone told me one time, well, you should learn to pray for at least an hour when we first got saved. And so I went out on the porch, must have been 5 or 5.30 in the morning, and we had a little place in Sugarloaf. And man, I prayed, and I literally played, prayed for the whole world. I mean, I prayed up a house of fire. And it took five minutes. <laughs> and I read Larry Lee's books, and I started the g learning some more things about it. And then after a while, I couldn't get it all done in five minutes. I mean, in an hour. Couldn't get it done in an hour. It would just take me too long. And after all those prayers and the things that I've done, I've realized that my prayer now is just, thank you, God, and I'm going to listen to you. Matter of fact, I'd rather you do the talking, God. You just need to know from my heart that I am very, very thankful. Thankful for everything. Thankful that we're all going to be going to heaven. Thankful that we don't even know what heaven's going to be like. Now, supposing, supposing all of a sudden, God just did this, and we're literally in heaven, but we're all sitting in here. Cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about that just for a minute. Because I, I would love that to be. I, I would love to be able to sit here and keep doing this to you guys forever. <laughs> for eternity. <laughs> hey, come on. Come on. Are you living right? Are you guys behaving yourself? Come on. But what's the difference going to be? What's the difference between heaven and right now? I mean, what is the real difference? You got to give that some thought, boys and girls. Because we're bringing heaven. When you, when you pray, you're bringing heaven down Amen. to you right now. You're going to be healthier in heaven? Well, you're going to have a new body. Can you wear it out? No. Can you wear it out? No. <laughs> you're going to be concerned about finances in heaven? No. You're concerned about finances now? No. Oh. Hmm? We trust in God? Yes. Huh? Oh, bring in heaven down. I think we're going to be shocked. You know what the second shock is? I think you're going to be surprised who's up there. And I think you're going to be surprised at, at, at the mansion. <laughs> I mean, the way people pray for me, you'd think I have the biggest mansion going up there. And I'm going, um, I hope God's hearing your prayers. That's all I can say, man. <laughs> I still wonder, God, what on earth are you doing with me? It's just, it's just me, God. It's just John, remember? The guy that can't really figure too many things out. It's just me. How awesome is God? That's right. Aren't you glad it has nothing to do with you? Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Now listen, we're going to move in a minute here quickly, maybe. But do me a favor and seriously pay attention to where I'm going, okay? Because if I get off track, I want to get back on track. All right? Sure. I'm going to rely on you. He redeemed us in order. He redeemed us in order. That's another reason. Well, this is why I came. I came to do this. He redeemed us in order. In order. That the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles. But it says might, and we know that, because you still have to receive the blessing, right? You've got to get saved. That opens the door. How many Christians actually even know anything about the Abrahamic blessing? You're not taught that in Sunday school for the most part. You're not going to learn those things in most churches. Why? Well, it has something to do with that prosperity stuff. <laughs> What Bible do you read? 
Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And everything, that's your, your sufficiency in all things is right there. Seek first the kingdom, his righteousness, and you don't have to worry about all those prayers afterwards. Give me this, give me that. Trust me, the things you need, oh, they'll come. That's right. Amen. You don't have to worry about it. But seek the kingdom. Seek his righteousness. And then, when you realize you're clothed in his righteousness when you're saved. This old boy's not getting any more righteous than you see him right now. It is a done deal. But I can walk in more of him here on earth as I continue to submit to him. You know, that's the thing about there's two types of that righteousness. You're clothed in his righteous, and then there's used living a truly righteous life. I'm glad I'm clothed in his righteousness because that takes care of that righteous life, but I still have to walk in it. That means you got to do right. And that's where the battle comes in. That's where the battle comes in with flesh man and spirit man. And that's what we're talking about today. Well, we haven't talked about it yet, but we're going to. Might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. And it did so that by faith, by faith, here we go again, we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. So by faith, I step out and I say, Holy Spirit, you lead and you guide me. Because he promised to send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is alive and well and living in me. Alive and well and living in you. And all we got to do now is allow him to speak to our spirit and listen to our spirit when he puts stuff in our heart. And if we will do that, you will dominate flesh man. You know, listen, flesh man gets such a bad rap. And I'm, we're, I'm, we're ultimately going to go through all those immoral debauchery and lasciviousness and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to go through everything. It's all real. But flesh man gets blamed for so much. And everybody, when you think of flesh man, you just think of somebody's committing adultery. There's flesh man going again. Oh, no, 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 no. Flesh man's much bigger than that. He's way bigger. And the crime of flesh man is way less than adultery. Yet it's all the same thing in the eyes of God. My, my, my. Did you know you needed a savior? <laughs> my, my, my. Did you know how powerful mercy and grace is? Yes. Are you glad? Yes. Oh, man. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Galatians 3.14. John 16.7. I think all of these scriptures came right out of Tabitha's Bible study. Turn to John 16.7. We're going to read them. And then go and listen to uh, her everyday face. That wasn't a podcast, was it? That was whatever it is. You tell everybody real quick what it was. Live Bible study on Instagram on the recordings that are saved there. Okay. And, she, and she, here's how she starts them all out. And it's awesome. I get a, such a kick out of it. Ready? And Michelle and I, we sit there and we go, what's the matter with the sound? What's the matter with the sound? And I go, she's not talking yet, honey. And I look and I go, man. I mean, she even makes the introduction awesome. Wow. How do people do these things? All right. Let's look at the Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what was that scripture? 16, verse 7. You guys all know this, but we're going to read them now. 16, and we're not going to go all over the place. 16, 7. But verily, but very truly, I tell you, it is for your good. God 
does everything for our good. Amen. Obedience to his word is for your good. Amen. The value system that he has given us, even though, oh, this is so restrictive, I can't do this, this, and this. All those things are for your good. Can you imagine that? He wants you to make good decisions so you'll have a good and blessed life. Real simple. How do you have a good and blessed life? Very, very simple. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and listen to Him in regards to your purpose and His will and fulfill those two things. That's it. Awesome, perfect, wonderful life. That's all you got to do. He's called you for a specific purpose. You, when I think about that call, and I can look at every one of you, you are special. Yeah. You're special. No matter what anybody says. You know, one of the, the saddest things in the world is like when people, they've been together, Michelle and I have, were going to be pushing. We got 45 years together married, right? Three years before that, two more years, we'll have been together for 50 years. That doesn't even seem possible. <laughs> you know, in 50 years, you're liable to take somebody for granted. Oh, it's just Michelle. One of the things that I've been realizing even lately is how special she is. <laughs> How's <laughs> no, yeah, that's not working, <laughs> and that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh man, just <laughs> I was just really moving in a good direction there <laughs> because, because. <laughs> What I want to say is that, and make sure that you know how special each one of you are. Now, listen, you may not be special to the person sitting next to you right now, and that's fine. But you are special to somebody, and it starts with God. That's the numero uno. Once you're special there, you just do what he's called you to do, and you're going to be good. But you are special. You're very special. And when those around you realize how special you are, you've got a friend. This little thing, I go, I mean, it really, it, it just hit me. I go, that girl's special. I would have never thought about doing this. That was a special thing. Am I getting off the wall or what? I think it's good. I think it's special. Oh, are you guys getting... Never mind. All right, pay attention, everybody. All right, let's elevate ourselves here. Very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Is that the scripture you quoted me? Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. You know, we talked about that once before. God finished everything in the book of Genesis. Jesus finished, just said, I have, it, it is finished on the cross. He ascended into heaven. And when he did that, he really finished when he sent the Holy Spirit. And he needed to do that. And that's when you knew that the end times had started That's right. right then and there. That was it, the beginning of the end. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin. Wow. And righteousness and judgment. I'd like to share on that, but I'm not going to today. Maybe another time, because that is a very, very powerful statement. I'm just going to read it again. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin. That's a, that's a deep thing there, isn't it? I can tell you the first thing that comes through my mind. 
is that when they, the way they handled sin was through the law. And they were all wrong about that. It was about this thing over here. It was about walking by faith. And then, they didn't pay any attention to what the result was when Abraham took this thing by faith and believed God. And that's what we need to be and do. We accept Jesus as our Savior. We accept what he did on the cross for us and we receive it. And we do that by faith. And then, now what happens to sin? He removes it as far as the east is from the west. Does that sound like freedom to you? Yes. Does that, at least Chris is free. Yes. That's good, Chris. Amen. Well, does that sound like freedom to you? Yes. From the east is to the west. Oh, he just wants good for you. He will prove the world, world to be wrong about sin and about righteousness and about judgment. Number one, we don't judge. Number two, our righteousness comes from him. It doesn't come from you. It comes from him. All of it does. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. What's that next scripture we have there? 1426. Same thing. Almost. Oof, oof da. Oh, let me see. Bottom of that page is gone. 1426. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my name, will teach you all things. All right, did you, did you get that? We know that, don't we? Who's the teacher? Holy Spirit. Teach you what? All things. There you go. So, wh why do we go to everybody else first? Holy Spirit, anybody come to me lately and say, you know, I just need you to give me some counseling or whatever, and what would I tell you? Man, you've got to be led by the Spirit. I can't, I can't do any better than that. I cannot. All the wisdom in the world doesn't hold a candle to being led by the Holy Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. What does it say? Whom the Father will send in my name, teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Pretty nice, huh? All right. What does 1613 say? 1613. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Has he come? Yes. yes. Is he in you? Yes. yes. Now he's going to guide you into all truth. That includes wisdom. He's going to guide you. He's going to do that. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. How powerful is that? Jesus took care of all of that on the cross, did that, and then sends the Holy Spirit to connect with our spirit. Wow. That's pretty special. Ah, Galatians chapter 5. I don't think we're going to get to these two scriptures like we're supposed to. So I suggest you write them down and read them this week. Okay? So turn to Galatians chapter 5. Why am I going to Galatians chapter 5? Because a few weeks ago, whenever this is where we ended up in Galatians chapter 5, this is where we're going to pick up because it's important. Verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Is there a calling on your life? Yes, yes. What is it? To be free. Okay, you're called to be free. Yes. Have you answered the call? Yes. Yes. Well, tell me, what does it feel like? Free. Huh? Yeah. Feels excellent? To be free. Now, does this call expire? No. Do you have to remind yourself of this call every day? Yes. <laughs> I think that might be a good idea to remind yourself every day. You've been called to do a number of things. One of them 
as we are ambassadors and represent Christ, is to be free. Amen. To be free. Amen. Which means it took me so long. You know, I'm kind of a st stiff person in company and stuff like that. Not a social butterfly. I, it's, I'm an awkward person when I get around people. Still to this day, it's very hard for me, unless I'm in amongst really, really tight, tight friends. You know, I go, oh gosh, just don't open your mouth, say something stupid, because that's usually what you do. And so these thoughts are all going through my mind. I've got to be careful what I say, you know, all of that. Yet he's teaching me something about being free, not being stupid, not telling everybody what's going through this brain. See, Ruth, Ruth drilled that into my head. John, not everything that goes through that brain of yours has to come out of your mouth. You got that, John? I'm not kidding. <laughs> she prayed for me three times a week, and three times a week she'd tell me that. John, I go, man, am I really screwing up, Ruth? John, everything that goes through that brain of yours does not have to come out of your mouth. Okay, okay. All right. Oh, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. I want you to go away with this scripture today. You've been, you're called to be free. Doesn't that feel like that? See, what I learned was that God showed me over the years freedom in discipline, freedom in responsibility. Freedom in doing what is right. Freedom to say no. Oh, this freedom is just a wonderful thing. Oftentimes it's a freedom not to do as opposed to a freedom to do. It's a real freedom. And he's called you and called me. Free from all the nonsense. Free from all the hurts of the past. You're free. Free from the pressure. Oh no, I'm still living under it. Slow down there. Start weeding some of this stuff out. But oh, it even says it. But don't use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Don't use it. You can still enjoy the flesh. Don't use your freedom to indulge in it. Freedom is used for everything else. Good things, awesome things, can be used in the flesh. I'll give you an example one time. Somebody came and said, Michelle was talking and her sister, were talking about taking vitamins. And somebody said to this person, I take these vitamins every single day of my life. Another Christian says, well, I'm, you're just in bondage to those vitamins. I'm free from them. And her response was, no, I am free to take them. You see how freedom works? No, 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 no. I'm free from the way you feel about it. To do what I think is best. To do what I believe the Holy Spirit's telling me. I am free from that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The wisdom of man would just get you in trouble over time. Oh, I tell you, Michelle hurt my feelings one time. Really horribly so. You know, it's just a few years ago because she, I, we were trying to figure something out and I said, well, this is what I think we need to do. And I was being spiritual. And she said, you know, that's just, that's just man's wisdom, John. That's just worldly wisdom. And she walks away. Number one, I was right. Number two, I know what man's wisdom is. I know what it says. And it's earthly, demonic, and all sorts of bad and crummy things. And I said, do you realize what you were saying just then? She didn't really mean that. She just meant, have you prayed about it and all that kind of stuff, right? But there is a difference between the two. And you don't want to get caught up in the one. You want the other one. You want God's wisdom. God's wisdom comes via the Holy Spirit to your spirit, and you're going to know it right here. Okay? You're going to feel it. This is the one of those times where you're going to feel it. It's not always he's going to speak to you in an audible voice. 
But he will give you. It's going to be something that's going to be here. There's no ifs and buts about it. He talks about it in the Word. We've all, if you're any kind of spiritual person, you've sensed it before here. Am I the only one? Raise your hand if you just sensed it right in here before. Okay, the rest of you guys got to get your shizzle together. Okay? This is where you're going to feel it. This is where you're going to sense it. Why? It's what the Word of God says. Hmm. Are we still on that same scripture? Oh, yeah, we are. This is slow going. And don't indulge in the flesh. Rather, what? Serve one another humbly in love. Wow, I should have serving up here, but here we just got that love thing again. Humbly serve. Okay, let's, let's move. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this command. We went through this. I heard this this morning. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law is fulfilled right there. Now, does that mean that we throw out the Ten Commandments? No, it doesn't. But if you're loving everybody, you're not going to think about the Ten Commandments. You're not going to go after their stuff. You're not going to covet their property. You're not going to lie to them. You're not going to steal from them. You're not going to try to cheat them. You don't do that to people you love. That's why love is so supreme. Because when you love, your behavior is a certain way. People can trust you when you walk in love. Do you think about that? A stranger can fully trust you when they know that you walk in love. Wow. Pretty awesome. But if you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you'll destroy yourself. What a sad thing. A sad thing. If you devour and bite, and you know, that's just bickering, and don't do it. Just stop it. We're all grown up. We all know we don't do those things. Just stop it. Let's live at peace. Peace with your spouse. Peace with your family. Do it. You can do it. In the scripture in Romans, it says, uh, it says, and live at peace with everybody to the best of your abilities. Okay? I mean, sometimes you just got to go and take a walk and get away or do whatever. All right? Do it. So I say, verse 16, walk by the Spirit. Oh, here we go, huh? I say, walk led by the Spirit. And you will not what? Gratify the desires of the flesh. In other words, you walk by the Spirit, Spirit man's going to rule inside of you, and you don't have to worry about flesh man rising up his head. Amen. Oh, man, that's, that's nice, isn't it? Well, that takes care of one thing. Now we can work on another thing. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. The thing of it is, here we go. The flesh, like I was telling people a couple weeks ago, this body has been a good friend to John. Really good friend. I'm glad I have him. I'm glad he's still moving around. But this body is not the real John. The real John is a spirit. And he's inside this thing. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. You pump up spirit man. You connect with spirit man. You don't have to worry about flesh man. Flesh man only gets out of control when he's not being told what to do by spirit man. He's just wandering and whatever comes along, he goes okay to. Flesh man's just not the brightest guy around. He wasn't meant to be a leader. The Holy Spirit is meant to lead your spirit and the spirit inside of you is meant to lead your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and flesh man. That's all you got to do. Put a little check there. I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. You don't have to worry about flesh man getting out of control. They are in conflict with one another so that you are not to do whatever you want. 
But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. That's twice in two, two scriptures. Being led by the Spirit. Now, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. If you walk in love, you're not under the law. If you're led by the Spirit, you're walking in love, you're not under the law. All right. I'm going to end with this, I think. Maybe. Mostly. I was listening to a preacher, preacher the other day. He'd been preaching to this one fella. He went up and did a revival. He preached twice a day for like eight or nine weeks. And then he came back to this guy's church ten years later or whatever. One was in Texas, one was from Texas to preach, and the other guy was in Canada. And when he's introducing the preacher, the guy from Canada, the preacher from Canada, he says, uh, he says, you know, I picked up a bunch of your sayings when you were here. And one of them that I use is that, uh, you know, I'm fixing the clothes now. <laughs> and the pastor up in Canada said, you know, he got his arm around the other pastor, and he says, but uh, someone from the congregation came up and asked me what that means, and I, I didn't know. <laughs> and the other pastor that came says, well, I can give you the interpretation. He goes, fixing the clothes is that you're preparing and getting ready and thinking about what you're going to be saying over the next X amount of time, and you're going to do something. But it's preparing and thinking about and all that kind of stuff. You're fixing to, you know, I'm fixing to go do something. I'm getting ready to think about and prepare and go and do. <laughs> you know, aren't you surprised at how you have such a, I, I was, I, I watch the influence that you guys have on one another. And there's an influence. And, I, and, it, and every time I see it, I go, man, that's, that's really neat. And it makes me think, am I being a good influence on everybody? Paul says, you follow me as I follow Christ. And that, in that example, I'll be an example to you as Christ is an example to me. It's a powerful, powerful statement because that's to me. He says, I'm going to be a carbon copy of Jesus. Therefore, you can copy me in what I say and what I do. I mean, that's, that's a tall order, isn't it? But people all around are looking and listening to you. And that's the way it should be. But we're going to influence one another. It's a wonderful thing when we're doing it correctly. What scripture was that? 13, 16. It says here, and I'll end right now. As you yield freely. This is how the Passion Version begins. You know, Miss Missy and I, we were driving maybe last month over to her house on Malabar. Over on 38, go down 38, then it starts going down the hill or up the hill. Got that turn. And right there at that turn, there's a yield. Dumbest yield sign on the planet. Amen. It's coming off of a three-way stop that all of us that potentially can go to that 50-yard stretch before the yield is, we're going 20 miles an hour when we hit that, and these guys are going 50 miles an hour, and they have to yield to us. I was sitting there, and Missy kind of goes, are you going to go? And I said, heck no. See all those cars? Well, they're supposed to yield, but they are not going to yield. They're just going too doggone fast, and I'd just be sitting over there, so I'm just going to wait here for those to go, and then I'll go across. Because they weren't going to yield. As you yield freely... You gotta yield yourself Amen. to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, I had mentioned in Acts chapter seven with Stephen, and when he's talking to all the religious crowd, and he says, "You stiff-necked people, you always resist the Holy Spirit." And it's also here, Exodus thirty-three, virtually the same thing, I think. You stiff-necked people. But Stephen is saying you resist the Holy Spirit. 
Would you really resist the Holy Spirit if you really knew it was the Holy Spirit? No. So what's happening? We get so caught up in whatever it is where flesh man just comes up, we can't hear spirit man. As you yield freely, I start that out every, Lord, I yield. You have me in every respect. I am yours. John is done. Over with. I yield freely. You know why? It says that he has nothing but good in store for me. If I don't yield, I'll guarantee you some good may come out of it. But some bad may come out of it, too. Nothing bad ever comes out of being led by the Holy Spirit. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Nothing. Isn't that marvelous? Yes. So we can have these marvelous lives we talk about. Right. You can have it. Yeah. You might along the way stumble and say some dumb thing. What a jackass I've been. <laughs> I wasn't led by the Holy Spirit. Dummy, dummy. Michelle shake her head, don't say that. I say that all the time to myself. Dummy, dummy, come on. I'm sorry, I'm still working on myself. Be led by the Holy Spirit. And fully, all right, as you yield freely and fully. All right, I'm yielding, I'm yielding freely, and all the chips are going in. All the chips are in. Pushing them all in. To what? To the dynamic life. Not just a life. Life serving God is a dynamic life. It's a powerful life. And the power of the Holy Spirit. You will abandon the crazy cravings of the self-life. This is the same scripture that we just read. For your self craves, for your life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit. Do you want to offend the Holy Spirit of God? I don't think so. I don't want to. And hinder Him from living freely within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self-life from dominating you. You continue to walk in the Holy Spirit and flesh man just gets pushed down automatically. You don't have to even strive anymore. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes. I mean, you will have what it takes. You don't have to do it in your own strength. It's going to be natural. Amen. Natural, supernatural. So then, the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you are self-life of the flesh. You are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation life of the spirit. Now, this can take us to so many directions, but we're done. But when you are brought into the full freedom of the Spirit, huh, I wonder if we've literally been brought into the full, to the full freedom of the Spirit yet. Do you think, think we've been brought into the full? I don't know. I think I'm getting a litter, littler, a little more fuller, a little fuller, being led by the Spirit, just being free and a little. You know how stuffy most churches are? I mean, seriously, what do they do with all these scriptures? Doesn't make any sense. What do they do with them? But when you're brought into the full freedom of the Spirit of what? Grace. I got to tell you, this last year, that was a revelation to me. Not the mercy and grace of the God, but the full impact of His grace. Hit me like a ton of bricks. The mercy and grace of God. A full dose. Wow. But when you were brought into the full freedom of the Spirit of grace, you will no longer be living under the domination. Here we go back to the domination of the law again. But soaring above it. 
You know, isn't that kind of nice when you think about just rising above, soaring above things? You know, I always tell my kids in, in, in things, we always take the high road. Whatever it is, we take the high road. We take the high road. You soar above. It's not about looking down. It's about making sure that we are doing what is right. Oh, people, this right here is so much fun. And I, I know I'm taking a long time to get to it. But we're going to learn. The journey is the best part here. And we go get these scriptures down and go over them again. Read them both in whatever version you use and then read them in the Passion Version also. Okay. And then let God just say, Holy Spirit, just, you speak to me. You speak to me. Amen, everybody. All right. Every head bowed right now and every eye closed, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just praise you and thank you. Hallelujah. You know, at this point in time, we just give an opportunity. You feel the Holy Spirit's been tugging on you. You've never received Jesus as your Savior, and he's, he's talking to you and tugging you right now. Or if you've got off track, or you just haven't been right. You just haven't been sensing and feeling the Holy Spirit alive inside of you. You've been allowing flesh man just to get the better of you. But you're, you're saying right now, I'm going to get back on track, man. I'm done with all that stuff. I'm pushing all the chips in. Just slip your hand up. This is for us here. Amen. And it's for all those out there, live stream. Amen. Okay. Listen, people, there is therefore no condemnation for those of us that are in Christ. But there is an awesome reckoning. And the reckoning is, you know what? We're laying down the self. And we're allowing the Spirit just to take over. Let's all pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I've asked you to forgive me of my sins. I've asked you before to cleanse me. And I receive it. You have forgiven me. You have cleansed me. And I receive it. And I'm going to walk in it. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you just continue to rise up inside of me. Continue to rise up inside of me. I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise, everybody. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Yes. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys that... Um, when Travis, uh, we took up that offering for Travis, and we sent him away with uh, 7,700 bucks. Awesome. Yeah. 77. So, give the Lord a praise for that.